Communication is the key to building lasting and meaningful relationships. But communication is more than just exchanging words. It's about creating understanding and connection. As George Bernard Shaw said, the single biggest problem in communication is the illusion that it has taken place. Effective communication goes beyond talking. It's a dynamic process that requires active involvement, mutual comprehension, and a deep bond. When we communicate effectively, we enrich our relationships and our lives. Effective communication has many benefits. It helps us to create trust, resolve conflicts, and feel united. It's essential for any kind of relationship, whether personal or professional. Without effective communication, our relationships can fall apart, leading to confusion, disappointment, and frustration. Effective communication also means expressing and understanding thoughts and feelings clearly and accurately. It's not enough to say what we think or feel. We also need to listen and empathize with what others think and feel. This way, we can create connections that are more than superficial. George Bernard Shaw's quote warns us about the danger of assuming that we have communicated when we haven't. It urges us to improve the quality and depth of our communication. Simply speaking words is not enough. We need to engage, listen, and bridge any gaps in understanding. Effective communication is also a bridge that allows trust, respect, and intimacy to flow freely in our relationships. It enables us to share our needs, vulnerabilities, and successes. It prevents conflicts from festering and damaging our relationships. Effective communication also helps us to deal with the diversity of perspectives and personalities. It makes us more open to different opinions and views. It creates a culture where differences are not barriers, but opportunities for growth and learning. It fosters harmony and collaboration, making our relationships more supportive and productive. Effective communication is not just a skill that we can learn, it's a mindset that we need to adopt. It requires us to be committed, adaptable, and responsible. George Bernard Shaw reminds us that we can only overcome the illusion of communication by making sure that we understand and are understood. We need to communicate with intention, not assumption. To sum up, effective communication is the foundation of strong relationships. It requires our attention, patience, and a sincere desire to connect with others on a deeper level. It's an art that we can master, and it will transform our relationships and ourselves. It will help us to understand and appreciate the complex and beautiful dance of human connection. Nonverbal Communication – How to Connect Without Words Oprah Winfrey once said, Great communication begins with connection. This simple statement captures a powerful truth that is often ignored in our wordy world. The role of nonverbal communication in creating effective and meaningful interactions. As we interact with others, we use more than words to express ourselves. We also use nonverbal cues and body language, which can have a huge impact on how our communication is received and understood. Nonverbal communication includes everything we do to communicate without speaking, such as facial expressions, gestures, posture, eye contact, and voice tone. These nonverbal cues add emotion, subtlety and depth to our verbal messages, making them more engaging and authentic. Nonverbal communication can also show how sincere and trustworthy we are. A smile, eye contact or a touch can convey warmth, empathy and openness, creating a bond of trust with others. On the other hand, if our nonverbal cues don't match our words, we can create confusion and doubt. For example, if we say something positive but frown or fold our arms, we send mixed signals that can make others unsure or suspicious. This shows how important it is to align our non-verbal communication with our verbal communication to avoid misunderstanding and miscommunication. Body language is a key aspect of non-verbal communication. It reveals a lot about how we feel and what we think, giving clues to our emotions and intentions. By paying attention to body language, we can better understand the hidden messages and dynamics of a conversation. Eye contact is another powerful form of nonverbal communication. It connects us with others, showing that we are interested and attentive. 
A glance can express curiosity, sympathy, or honesty, creating a space for real connection to grow. Gestures are another way to enrich our verbal communication. They can clarify, emphasize, or illustrate our words, making them more clear and memorable. However, we need to be aware of the cultural differences in how gestures are interpreted, as some gestures may have different meanings or implications in different contexts. Posture and body position also affect our nonverbal communication. They show how approachable and receptive we are, or how defensive and resistant. By being aware of these nonverbal signals, we can adjust our own body language to improve our communication outcomes. Nonverbal communication is especially important in professional settings. It can influence how we are perceived and how we perform in situations such as job interviews, client meetings, and team projects. Leaders who are skilled in nonverbal communication can inspire confidence, build rapport, and foster a positive organizational culture. In conclusion, nonverbal communication is a vital part of our communication skills. It can enhance the quality of our relationships with others by adding meaning, emotion, and authenticity to our words. In a world full of words, nonverbal cues are the silent but powerful tools that shape our communication. As Oprah Winfrey said, great communication starts with connection, and connection goes beyond words. It involves the subtle but significant language of the silent cues that we use and observe. Active listening, how to communicate effectively and connect authentically. Stephen R. Covey once said, most people do not listen with the intent to understand, they listen with the intent to reply. Active listening is more than just hearing words. It is a dynamic process that requires active involvement, trying to comprehend not only the message, but also the feelings, motives and viewpoints behind it. Stephen R. Covey once said, Most people do not listen with the intent to understand, they listen with the intent to reply. Active listening is more than just hearing words. It is a dynamic process that requires active involvement, trying to comprehend not only the message but also the feelings, motives and viewpoints behind it. Active listening means paying full attention. In a world full of distractions and noise, giving the speaker our undivided focus is a rare and valuable gesture, showing that we respect them and care about what they have to say. Another key element is giving feedback, not by reacting immediately, but by using reflective statements like I hear you or it seems like you're feeling. This shows that we are listening and empathizing, building trust and rapport. Restating and summarizing help us to confirm our understanding, avoid miscommunication and clarify any confusion. Nonverbal signals such as eye contact and a relaxed posture also demonstrate that we are interested and engaged. It is important not to interrupt the speaker. In situations of conflict, active listening can help to resolve problems by creating mutual understanding and cooperation. In work settings, it can improve leadership, teamwork, and customer relations. To sum up, active listening is a powerful skill that can improve communication and connection. By being fully present and responding with care, we can foster better relationships, following Covey's advice to listen not just to reply, but to truly understand. How empathy makes conversations better and bonds stronger. Empathy is more than just feeling what others feel. It is also connecting with them on a deeper level, making them feel seen, heard, and valued. Stephen R. Covey said that empathy can dissolve defensiveness and create positive energy. This is how empathy can transform our conversations and relationships. Empathy is essential for effective communication. It starts with active listening, which means paying attention, withholding judgment, and giving feedback. This shows that we are genuinely interested in understanding others, not just hearing them. Empathy also goes beyond words, as it requires us to be sensitive to non-verbal cues, such as facial expressions and body language. These cues can reveal the emotional state of the speaker and help us to connect with them more deeply. Another way to express empathy is to use validating statements such as, I understand how you feel. 
These statements show that we acknowledge and respect the emotions of others, and that we are not here to judge or criticize them. Empathy also means putting ourselves in the shoes of others and trying to see things from their perspective. This helps us to build understanding, bridge differences, and appreciate our common humanity. Empathy can have a powerful impact, especially when there is distress or conflict. When people feel heard and understood, they are more likely to lower their defenses and open up to positive energy. This can lead to resolution and strengthening of the relationship. Empathy is also important for building trust, which is the basis of strong connections. When we show that we care and reciprocate the emotions of others, we establish trust and foster a climate of openness, cooperation and support. Empathy is not only beneficial for personal relationships, but also for professional ones. Leaders who practice empathy can improve the organizational culture, the team cohesion and the employee satisfaction. Customers who are treated with empathy are more likely to be loyal and to have a positive impression of the organization. To sum up, empathy can change the way we relate to others. It involves active listening, non-verbal sensitivity, and perspective taking. By showing that we care and resonate with the emotions of others, we can enhance our conversations and relationships and create a more compassionate world. As Covey said, empathy can break down the walls of defensiveness and create a flow of positive energy that enriches our connections. Effective verbal communication skills. How to speak clearly and respectfully. Doug Larson once said, Wisdom is the reward you get for a lifetime of listening when you'd have preferred to talk. This quote highlights the importance of listening well in effective verbal communication. To communicate effectively, you need more than just words. You also need to consider your tone, empathy and audience. Choose your words carefully. Words have power. They can affect how people feel and think. Think before you speak and choose words that are respectful and appropriate for the situation. Avoid words that might offend, hurt, or confuse your listener. Be brief and clear. Less is more. Don't ramble or repeat yourself. Say what you mean and mean what you say. Being brief and clear makes your message easier to understand and shows respect for your listener's time and attention. Watch your tone. Tone is how you say something, not what you say. Your tone can change the meaning of your words. Use a tone that is calm, polite and confident. Avoid a tone that is angry, rude or insecure. Your tone should match your message and your intention. Listen actively. Effective verbal communication is not a one-way street. You need to listen as well as speak. Listen to what others are saying and show that you are interested and attentive. Listening well can help you learn from others and respond better. Use I statements. When you share your thoughts or feelings, use I statements to take responsibility and avoid blaming. For example, say, I feel frustrated when, instead of, you always. Ask for feedback. Feedback is a way to check if your message is received as you intended. Ask questions to see if your listener understood you and to clear up any confusion. For example, ask, what do you think about what I just said? Or do you have any questions? Pay attention to non-verbal cues. Non-verbal communication is what you do, not what you say. It includes your facial expressions, body language and eye contact. Your non-verbal cues can support or contradict your verbal message. Make sure your non-verbal cues are consistent with your words and your purpose. Know your audience. Different people may have different expectations, preferences and backgrounds. Know who you are talking to and adjust your communication style accordingly. Consider factors such as culture, age, education and relationship. Knowing your audience can help you communicate more effectively and respectfully. Pause for reflection. Silence can be golden. Pause between sentences or ideas to give your listener time to think and process information. Pausing can also help you organize your thoughts and choose your words wisely. Choose the right setting. The place where you communicate can affect how well you communicate. 
Choose a setting that is suitable for your message and your audience. Avoid settings that are noisy, crowded or distracting. Choose settings that are quiet, comfortable and private. Be open to feedback and change. Communication is a dynamic process. You can always improve and learn from your experience. Be open to feedback from others and be willing to change your communication style if needed. Being flexible can make you a more effective communicator. To sum up, effective verbal communication is a skill that involves words, tone, listening and more. It can help you express yourself clearly and respectfully and build understanding and connection with others. As Doug Larson said, listening is the key to wisdom. By following these tips and balancing words and silence, you can master the art of verbal communication. Conflict Resolution – How to Grow from Challenges As the Dalai Lama said, the best way to resolve any problem in the human world is for all sides to sit down and talk. Conflict resolution is more than just finding a middle ground. It is a way of opening up a dialogue to discover what is important for everyone involved, which can improve both personal and professional relationships. Conflict is inevitable, as we all have different perspectives and needs. Instead of avoiding or suppressing it, we can embrace it as a natural part of life that can lead to constructive outcomes, such as deeper understanding, stronger relationships, and personal growth. Here are some tips on how to resolve conflicts effectively and positively. Recognize the value of conflict resolution. It is not just a way to end a dispute, but a proactive way to address differences, create a culture of cooperation and respect, and prevent future problems. See conflicts as opportunities. Rather than viewing conflicts as threats or obstacles, see them as chances to learn and grow, to understand other points of view, to expand your horizons, and to stimulate your creativity. Communicate openly and listen actively. Be honest and respectful in expressing your thoughts and feelings, and listen attentively and empathetically to what others have to say, without judging or interrupting them. Solve problems collaboratively. Aim for solutions that satisfy the needs and interests of all parties, rather than imposing your own agenda or compromising for the sake of peace. This can build trust and foster long-term cooperation. Use emotional intelligence. Be aware of your own emotions and how they affect your behavior and manage them in a constructive way. Also, show empathy and compassion for the emotions of others and avoid escalating the conflict with negative or aggressive reactions. Give and receive constructive feedback. Feedback is a way of helping each other improve and grow, not of criticizing or blaming. Focus on the behavior, not the person, and use specific and positive language. Establish clear communication channels. Make sure that everyone has access to the same information and can communicate effectively with each other, whether in person or online. Avoid misunderstandings and miscommunication by being clear and concise. Learn and adapt. Conflict resolution is not a one-time event, but a continuous process. Learn from each experience and apply what you learned to the next one. Be flexible and willing to change your approach if needed. Seek mediation when necessary. Sometimes conflicts are too complex or sensitive to be resolved by the parties themselves. In such cases, it may be helpful to seek the help of a professional mediator who can offer a neutral and objective perspective and facilitate the communication and negotiation process. Strengthen your connections through resolution. Resolving conflicts successfully can lead to more durable and resilient relationships as long as you treat each other with respect and commitment. Celebrate your achievements and appreciate your differences. To sum up, conflict resolution is a way of transforming challenges into growth opportunities. Use it as a tool to enhance your understanding, collaboration and personal development and to create healthy relationships and a culture that values open communication and collective growth. Trust and Transparency – How to Build Lasting Relationships Trust is more than a compliment, as George MacDonald said. It is the cornerstone of human connections. Trust and transparency are the key ingredients for strong and lasting relationships. 
they create a climate of understanding, reliability, and mutual respect. Here are some aspects of trust and transparency that we can explore. Trust is the basis. Trust is not just a hope, but a solid foundation for relationships. It is the confidence we have in each other, based on consistent behavior, reliability, and integrity. Trust is a delicate but resilient bond that holds a relationship together with strength and endurance. Transparency is the way. Transparency is the willingness to be open, honest and authentic. It is the way to build trust, open communication, sharing thoughts and feelings, and avoiding hidden agendas create a trusting relationship, bridging gaps of understanding and creating security. Trust and transparency depend on each other. Trust and transparency reinforce each other. Being transparent builds trust, and being trusted encourages more transparency. This positive cycle strengthens the connection between individuals. Consistency builds trust. Consistency in words and actions is crucial for building trust. Trust develops over time through consistent, reliable behaviors. Showing reliability and keeping promises deepens trust, making a solid foundation for the relationship. Vulnerability helps trust. Vulnerability, the willingness to share fears and hopes, is a powerful way to build trust. It invites others to respond in kind and creates a deeper connection based on understanding and empathy. Mistakes and forgiveness restore trust. Mistakes are unavoidable. Admitting mistakes, taking responsibility, and asking for forgiveness help to restore trust. Accepting flaws increases credibility and shows the authenticity of the relationship. Open communication is essential. Clear and open communication is vital for building trust. Talking about issues directly creates a climate where individuals feel heard, valued and understood. Boundaries and privacy respect trust. Respecting boundaries and privacy is important for trust building. Individuals should feel safe knowing that their personal space and information are respected, which promotes autonomy and trust. Honesty, even in hard conversations, shows transparency. Honest communication, even in difficult situations, is a sign of transparency. Talking about hard topics with honesty and sensitivity shows a commitment to keeping an open and truthful dialogue. Trust and transparency in professional settings. Trust and transparency are also important in professional relationships, improving collaboration and organizational performance. Leaders who show transparency and trustworthiness create a positive organizational culture. To conclude, George MacDonald's words remind us that trust is a precious and rare gift in any relationship. By practicing transparency, showing trustworthiness, and communicating openly, we can build relationships that last and grow. Trust and transparency, when we nurture them consciously, raise relationships to a level of strength, understanding, and lasting connection. How to communicate positively, growing your connections through words. John C. Maxwell once said, Communication works for those who work at it. This captures the importance of intentional effort in developing positive communication habits. We will explore some practical tips on how to communicate positively and effectively with others. These tips are based on the wisdom of Maxwell's quote, and they will help you improve both your personal and professional relationships. Listen actively. Don't just hear what the speaker is saying, but listen with full attention curiosity, and respect. Active listening helps you understand the speaker's perspective and leads to more meaningful interactions. Show empathy. Try to feel what the other person is feeling and see things from their point of view. Empathy allows you to communicate with more compassion and kindness and creates a deeper connection. Use positive language. Make it a habit to use words that are uplifting and encouraging. Avoid words that are negative, harsh or rude, as they can cause misunderstandings and damage relationships. Be open and transparent. Create a culture of openness by sharing information honestly and clearly. Transparent communication builds trust and creates a space where ideas can thrive. 
Pay attention to nonverbal cues. Notice the speaker's body language, facial expressions, and tone of voice. Make sure your own nonverbal cues match the positive message you want to convey. Express gratitude. Incorporate gratitude into your communication habits. Say thank you often and appreciate the efforts and contributions of others. This creates a positive atmosphere. Give constructive feedback. Provide feedback that is specific, helpful, and respectful. Focus on the behavior and its impact, not the person. This helps others improve and strengthens relationships. Focus on solutions, not blame. Adopt a habit of looking for solutions instead of blaming others. A solution-oriented approach fosters collaboration and problem-solving. Adjust your communication style. Recognize and adapt to the communication preferences of others. Adjusting your style makes your message more effective and appealing. Establish clear communication channels. Make it a habit to communicate through the appropriate channels and ensure clarity and consistency. This reduces misunderstandings and fosters a positive environment. Create a culture of inclusivity. Make sure everyone feels heard and valued. Invite diverse perspectives and solicit input from all team members. Evaluate your communication effectiveness. Regularly review your communication habits and seek feedback for improvement. Keep learning and refining your skills. To sum up, positive communication habits require intentional effort and mindfulness. The tips we have talked about, inspired by John C. Maxwell's wisdom, offer a guide for developing habits that enhance your communication. By practicing open, empathetic and inclusive communication, you can create an environment where ideas flourish, relationships thrive and connections grow stronger and deeper.